I study uh, Stack Overflow, which is a uh, site for question and answers of uh, programming questions, very popular with programmers of C, Python, and other ones. And I'm interested in the question of why people spend so much time answering questions and asking questions, editing other people's questions, because there are literally millions and millions of those. And I conclude that career concerns play a very important role. In other words, people answer questions so that potential employers see that they are good at answering questions and offer them a job. The way I can identify that career concerns are important is by looking at what happens when somebody gets a job. If uh, answering questions is so important so that people look at you, then the moment you get a job, that motivation disappears. And you would expect that the quantity of answers that you, uh, of work that, that you uh, uh, put answering questions would go down. And it does go down by about 25%. There could be many different reasons why people uh, decrease the level of their activity on Stack Overflow once they get a job. One of them is that you get busier, have a, a new job to work on, and don't have time to answer questions. And one important thing about Stack Overflow is that you can spend time both answering questions, which is something that creates a reputation for you, or editing other people's answers, which is something that does not create a reputation for you. And I find that even though both go down when you get a new job, which means you're getting busier, the activity of answering questions, which is the one that uh, increases your reputation, decreases at a much, much greater uh, scale than the other one. So it's this difference of differences, the difference in the drop of um, answering questions with respect to editing other people's questions that I identify as evidence that career concerns are very important. I think the biggest thing that comes to mind to me is information. The value of information, the quantity of information, the power that you get from information. To be more specific, the way I think, it may sound like a cliche, you know, the internet has been very important, the internet has changed the way we do things, but it's important, it's true. But I think it's important to see how it actually has changed our lives. And I think one summary way of explaining that is in two words, search and share. Uh, the internet, I think, and digitization has been very important in trying to bring supply and demand together. If you're looking for a very, very specific book, uh, 20 years ago, trying to find that in a bookstore could be hopeless. Nowadays, it's very simple and easy. So that power of bringing together people has had an enormous impact in the economy. That's the search component of, uh, of the internet. The other one is share. You know, I bought Harry Potter not so much because I liked Harry Potter, but because if I didn't read Harry Potter, I couldn't have a conversation with anyone else. And the reason why this global Harry Potter phenomenon happened is really the Internet as well. So these are two very different features of the information age, which I think had a huge impact on the economy, the share and, and, and the search. Each of them, I think, has had a very important effect on the way consumers firms, and markets operate. A very clear example of the importance of the search uh, feature, as it were, of the internet is the so-called long tail. I mean, the fact that more than a third of Amazon's revenues come from books that never sell, as it were, from books that are below the 100,000th ranking in the list of titles available, books that would never be on a shelf of a Barnes & Noble store, even the bigger one, that is, I believe, a clear uh, area where the search feature of the internet has been very important. Because, of course, we could all have those many multiple titles beforehand. In fact, I could go to Barnes & Noble and ask for that rare book. What the internet has allowed me to do is to find that book. Uh, so it's this idea that if I'm interested in the history and culture of French chocolate, and I'm not, not making this up, this book exists, um, I can find that with good recommender systems, with good search engines online, I can make this match between author and reader, which I would be unable to do uh, even 20 years ago. So that is a clear example of how the search feature of the internet is important. The share one is also uh, quite evident in social networks. We have always had social networks uh, in history uh, of different sorts. Uh, the difference of the internet is that they are bigger, quicker, broader, everything else. One of my favorite examples is that um, when Susan Boyle won the British Got Talent 
contest, which made her famous almost overnight. It's not so much the fact that, that it's got millions of users overnight. It's that the pattern, you can look at that with a Google search um, feature, the pattern of popularity is almost perfectly parallel in the UK, in the US, and Japan. That's what did not happen 20 years ago. We've had social networks for a long time, but not with this extension that we now have. I think the impact of uh, the digital age on, on corporations is quite important, especially, I like to say that it's the uberization of labor in the 21st century. Uh, we find that not only on Uber in a particular platform, but on many other instances where um, digital platforms, the search feature that I mentioned earlier, allows for a very good match between suppliers and demanders to the extent that it may make many organizations obsolete. Many organizations currently function in a way as a platform between uh, input suppliers and final consumers. In many occasions, they may be replaced, in my belief, by um, appropriate platforms. This will also, in a way, create a, I would say, a new concept of what an organization is. Uh, for example, go back to the Uber example, are Uber drivers employees of Uber or not? What organization do they belong to? Um, maybe there's not an answer to that. I mean, there's a legal answer probably, and it's been discussed in court, but economically, uh, they're clearly not workers in a traditional sense of the word. They don't have a long-term labor contract with Uber, but evidently they work through Uber. Uh, they are paid by Uber. So this definition of what is an organization and what are the limits of the organization, I think are going to be challenged by um, this big digital revolution, which is uh, the existence of platforms that largely replace um, organizations in one of the roles that they've played in the past. One of the advantages that firms may have in this new economy is data. I frequently ask my students, what is Amazon's comparative advantage? Some say that it's their brand. Some say that they have a very good warehouse system. I would say that that main competitive advantage is the amount of data they have, in particular data from previous purchases on Amazon.com, which allows them to perfect their search and match and algorithm, ultimately their recommender system. That's something that's very difficult to replicate because you simply do not have that data. Um, and I believe that is going to be one of the great competitive advantages of firms in the information age, the idea that you are able to match in a very efficient way suppliers and consumers. <laughs>